Today we take it for granted that the bad effects of drinking beer are caused by the quantity rather than the quality of the beer. The improvement in the process of fermentation has been achieved by extensive research in the brewing industry. And one of the world leaders in this area is Leicester graduate uh, Godfrey Palmer. Godfrey was born in St. Elizabeth, Jamaica, where he was brought up by members of his family in Almontown, Kingston. In 1955, at the age of 14, he migrated on his own to Islington, London to join his mother with the intention of helping her by working in a local grocery shop. Fortunately for him, he was not allowed to work because he was below the school leaving age, which at that time was 15. Overcoming early educational challenges, he stayed on at school until he was 17. Godfrey excelled at a number, as a member of the prestigious London School's cricket team, having learned his cricketing skills at the race course in Kingston, Jamaica. After leaving school, Godfrey secured a job in Queen Elizabeth College, London, as a junior technician, whilst attending night classes to improve his academic qualifications. Godfrey's employer, Professor Garth Chapman, helped him to get a place at uh, Leicester University, where he went on to graduate in botany in 1964. Godfrey has just revealed to me that his final year project uh, was the basis of all his subsequent research. So just think about your final year project. Maybe it'll be the, uh, the start of something big. After completing his degree, Godfrey returned to Haringey to look for employment. However, there was no suitable job available and Godfrey found himself peeling potatoes at a restaurant in North London. After six months, he applied for a joint PhD in grain science and technology at Heriot Watt College and Edinburgh University. He was accepted and completed the degree in only two years with a thesis entitled Ultrastructure of Cereal Grains in Relation to Germination. Further postdoctoral research followed at Heriot Watt under the supervision of Professor Anna MacLeod and Sir Edmund Hurst. In 1968, Godfrey began working at the Brewing Research Foundation in Surrey, specializing in the science and technology of barley. Barley is converted into malt by the process of malting, in which grains are first germinated, and the germination is then halted by drying with hot air. Malting releases enzymes which convert the starch in the grain into sugars and other enzymes which can be used by the, e by the yeast in the fermentation process. Godfrey Palmer discovered that when barley grains are subjected to mechanical abrasion, the malting process is far more efficient. This discovery is called the barley abrasion process, which was patented in 1969 and immediately used by the British brewing industry. The key innovation in this discovery was the use of the electron microscope to observe the effects of abrasion on barley grain. In 1977, Godfrey returned to Heriot Watt University as a lecturer. In 1989, he published the major textbook in the field called Serial Science and Technology. In 1990, Godfrey was promoted to professor and also served in Japan as visiting professor at Kyoto University. During his working life, Professor Palmer has traveled and lectured worldwide and was instrumental in the development of the cereal sorghum as a food and brewing material in Africa. He made several trips to Nigeria, Kenya, Zimbabwe, and South Africa to promote this idea. He also helped to secure the first export of British barley to China. On his retirement in 2005, Godfrey was made Emeritus Professor of Heriot Watt University and has accepted honorary doctorates from a number of universities, including two in Jamaica. He is a fellow of the Royal Society of Medicine and of the Institute of Brewing. He is still actively in, involved in science and technology and has recently completed chapters for books on distilled beverages, barley and malt. When Godfrey goes to supermarkets, he is proud to see many of the beverages on sale are produced by his former students. Throughout his successful academic career, Godfrey has never forgotten the challenges and indeed prejudice he encountered as a young black boy in 1950s England. 
Godfrey made it his business to help secure better opportunities for black and minority ethnic children. In, in the 1970s, he wrote a series of articles in the Times Educational Supplement explaining their specific needs. He is a Black Enterprise Award winner and also the author of two books on race relations. Godfrey is a free man of Midlothian County and, and was given the Good Citizen Award of Edinburgh for his work on race relations. God, uh, Godfrey continues to be actively engaged in charitable work in the community, focusing on helping deprived children. He is honorary president of the Edinburgh and Lothians Regional Equality Council and of the Birmingham Association of Jamaicans. He also continues to support his past church and school in Jamaica. In 1998, Godfrey was the fourth person, and at that time the only European, to receive the American Society of Brewing Chemists Award for research on cereals, an achievement which is regarded in the brewing industry as its Nobel Prize. In 2003, he was awarded the OBE for scientific and charitable work and received a knighthood in 2014 for his work in science, human rights, and charity. Mr. Chancellor, on the authority of the Senate and the Council, I present Godfrey Henry Oliver Palmer, so that you may confer on him the degree of Doctor of Science. It's an absolute pleasure to give this to you. Thank you so much for accepting it. Yes, to see you. Vice-Chancellor, Chancellor, Chancellor um, and all the members of the Leicester University staff who worked so hard to get me down here from Edinburgh yesterday. Um, I cannot imagine that I'm standing here today because I can still remember 1964 um, receiving my degree from the university. Um, and what I'd like to just say is a, a few words. I, I'm told I've got about three minutes. <laughs> um, tell you a few words about being at this university and what it has meant for me, to me, and what it has done for me. I arrived here in 1961, and I looked at all the buildings this morning, and I wondered what has happened to the place. It has grown and grown and grown compared to what I knew in 1961. The most significant thing which I think happened to me here is not me getting my degree, was a month after I arrived in October, November, 1961, there was a young girl and she was going past the Percy G building and her bicycle broke down. So I walked across the road and I said, can I help? And of course I fiddled with the bicycle and I, I, I couldn't fix it because I was only a botanist. <laughs> she thought I was an engineer. <laughs> However, um, I didn't see her for a while, and then I, uh, my, my friend and I, there were only about four minority ethnic students at this university then. And two of us decided, in, because we wanted to get to know the uh, other members of the university, we set up what we called the International Society. And I got a feeling it was the first International Society of this university, and I'm told that you still have one. Um, at this university. Well, the first thing we did, we got a grant from the Students' Union, and we kept a party, just the two of us. <laughs> and lo and behold, guess who turned up? The girl whose bicycle I ruined. <laughs> um, I think she, I, I don't know what she wanted, but she said, um, I wanted to know what you did at this society, um, because she says you're from Haringey as an international society. <laughs> anyway, um, we got to know each other rather well, and um, being in this hall is a wonderful reminder, because in 1962, I was sitting exactly where I'm sitting today, in that seat. She was sitting next to me, that's 1962, and the person sit standing in front of us, singing, was Ella Fitzgerald. Now, the students got the cheap seats behind the singers in those days. And we're all enjoying the concert 
when she said to me, I've got to get back to College Hall or they'll lock me out. So we had to walk from there, down those steps there, along there, and Ella Fitzgerald waited till we got to the door and she said, don't miss the bus. <laughs> and then I tried to tell her, we're probably the most famous person in the music business because we're the only person who's ever walked out of an Ella Fitzgerald concert. Of course, the young lady who I'm talking about, two of her daughters are sitting up there and her grandchildren are up there as well. So the university not only gave me a degree, it gave me a wife and a family. <laughs> they're, they're all sitting up there. Stand up. Susan, Susan and Catherine, would you stand up? And Daniel, stand up. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as far as this university is, is, is concerned, um, as I said, I, I, I've, I've done a bit of race relation work. And one of the things it's taught me was that people are not just races. People are people. And therefore, that's one of the messages I learned when I left this university, that people are people. And I've tried to use that sort of knowledge I gained here in all the work I've done. And finally, I was just looking at my project, which I did in 1964. I did a project on water relations. And one of the things I discovered, it seemed, because I haven't read the thesis since 1964 of my project. And what my project showed was that a plant during drought tends to move water from the older parts of the plant to the youngest part of the plant, which are the buds. And I was one of the buds of this university in 1964. I've tried to do my best and I wish you all the same as well. Thank you. <laughs>